Hello YouTube, uh, it's RJ here. Welcome to Auto and Bloods. This channel is about me and my wife, who is behind the scenes, spending time in the woods, finding, identifying, and collecting edibles and inedibles, mainly wild mushrooms, but plants and fruits as well. If you think winter is not the time for foraging, because it's too cold for anything delicate to survive, well, that means you'll be missing a lot of choice edibles. One. Oh, two, three. Winter, in fact, is my second favorite season when it comes to mushroom hunting next to fall. Because it's mosquito free, spider net free, and almost competitors free. Well, I mean, much fewer foragers and absolutely zero maggots, right? So, in today's video, I'm going to present 10 edible mushrooms that we found in November and December. Most of them are choice edibles, but some of them have poisonous lookalikes, and I will cover that too. Then I will share how we turn them into yummy dishes, and I bet you will like them, so stay tuned. First one, the famous lion's mane. Holy moly. <laughs> Covered by teeth. White when young and yellowish with age. Hard to be confused with any other mushrooms, and definitely one of our favorites. We got the luck to find multiple heads this year, some in October and November, and more in December. So if you are willing to go into some deep woods, chances are that you will find this mushroom throughout the winter. Sweet In past videos, I've shared three ways of cooking lion's manes. Butter sherry, sweet sour, and grilled cheese. But here is something new. Popcorn lion's mane. Lion's mane can sometimes be sour and bitter. To get rid of the taste, rinse the mushroom on the water and squeeze the liquid out. Repeat several times to get super clean, non-sour lines main pieces. Season clean mushroom chunks with spices of your choice. We use black pepper, popcorn, garlic powder, paprika, plus a pinch of salt. Add a tablespoon of flour to absorb any liquid brought out by the salt. So the idea is to make the mushroom surfaces as dry as possible, so the batter can stick better. To make the batter, mix one part of flour with one part of tapioca starch, plus a teaspoon of baking soda. Dissolve the mixture in water, and add some salt and pepper to season. Bath the mushroom in batter. Then they are good to fry. Fry in batches if you use a small pot.
bring the oil temperature up and do a quick second round fry for a crunchy result. Here you can add some Thai basil leaves. Now you've got the super crispy and juicy popcorn lines made. And they go well with honey mustard and tartar sauce. Then beat the resinous polypore. I laid for mushroom with numerous tiny pores rather than gills under the cap. It's quite easy to identify, especially when it's young. Three indicators. First, look under the cap and you will see there is a folded part hidden beneath the root and attached to the stem. Second, this mushroom tends to exude reddish droplets, hence the name resinous polypore. Third, see the white belt on the brim of the dark cap? That's the part you want to harvest, and it's also the only part you can chew. Resinous polypore tastes better than it looks. I highly recommend dry sautéing, as for all spongy mushrooms. After that, you can stir fry in butter and serve directly. Or, like my wife is doing here, mince them into small pieces and mix into batter with green onions and dried shrimps to make a pancake. Our third mushroom is... No, not this one. This is its poisonous look-alike, deadly galerina, or funeral bell. Yeah, you get the idea. So you don't want to confuse it with our third edible mushroom, the honey mushroom, Amilaria gallica, to be specific. The Gallica species grows in small clusters, has brown caps, and a web-like frail partial bell that will later leave a ring dome on the stem. Unfortunately, the same characteristics applies to deadly galerinas too. But there are still ways to tell them apart. Just remember three things. First, the honey has fine hairs on the cap and the stem, while the galerina is bold. Second, the honey is much sturdier than the flimsy galerina. And the third, the honey has white flesh and spore print, whereas the deadly galerina has brown flesh and dark brown spore print. You can expect to see the Amilaria gallicos from October to December, but in December, they probably are too old to harvest. <laughs> wow. Honey mushrooms are very crunchy and won't get soggy after being fully cooked. And by the way, never waste the stems of young honey mushrooms. 
They are as tasty and even crunchier than the caps. My wife's favorite recipe is the honey fried tofu stew. First, pan fry the tofu until both sides are golden. This will take around three minutes for each side. To prevent the oil from popping, you'd better dry the tofu with paper towel beforehand. In another pot, add two cups of water, then half a cup of soy sauce, meringue, and sake, mixed in a ratio of one to one to one and one teaspoon of sugar. Then add fish cakes, fried tofu, and the mushroom. Simmer for around 10 minutes until mushrooms get fully cooked and the tofu well absorbs the flavor. With this recipe, you can use any stock to substitute water, and you can add some veggies like carrots and peas for nutrition and colors. But this dish is tasty as is. This guy is pretty easy to identify, the pheasant speck mushroom, which really lives up to its name. For the cooking purpose, palm-sized ones are the best, although you can also harvest and eat the outer edge from a bigger and older specimen. We didn't end up cooking this pheasant's back, but instead dried it under the sun and keep it in our dry mushroom collections. It's a shrimp of the boots. Oh, it's a, yeah, it's a giant shrimp of the boots. Oh my gosh. This is the biggest shrimp of the woods I have ever <laughs> The fifth, shrimp of the woods. Shrimp of the woods is quite unique because it's the result of one species of fungi parasitized by another species. For a detailed story, check my other video by clicking the link on the right corner. <laughs> you can add the shrimp of the woods to any dishes where you would use real shrimps. Shrimp fried rice, for example. Again, dry saute first. So your dish don't get ruined by all the liquids contained in the mushroom, and you want to brown the mushroom to bring out its aroma. All these pieces are from that one giant shrimp of the woods I just showed, by the way. But if you have more to add, that's better, because once cooked, the shrimp of the woods tastes just like shrimps. What follows is to do a stir-fried rice. And if you don't know how, make scrambled eggs with two to three eggs. Set aside while there are still some liquid eggs remain. You will fry them with rice again later. Add oil, saute minced garlic for a while. Throw in some frozen or fresh vegetable cuts. Then add rice. Leftover rice is better here because it's drier. then scrambled egg and shrimp of the woods. Stir fry for another 5 minutes on high heat or until the grains get loose and well separated. Sometimes I like to stir fry for a bit longer to lightly brown the rice and veggies. If you like stir-fried rice, some brown shrimp of the woods will bring it to a whole new level.
Now number six, the oyster mushrooms. There are different species of oyster mushrooms, and most of them have a purple-gray spore print, which is very unique and a key identifying feature. But make sure you do the print on a white background, otherwise you won't see the beautiful color, but only a common white print. You basically can find oyster mushrooms all year long. Wow, how hot! There are many ways to cook oyster mushrooms, but in winter, we always go with hot pot. Yes, bluets. Bluets are winter mushrooms. I found them mostly in November and in December after rains. Though you may start to spot some since early fall or even late summer. The bluet has this beautiful lilac color, but in my experience, as the weather gets colder, they turn into light tan. Though you should still be able to detect some lilac hues on the gills and the flesh. Twenty two Fahrenheit. Twenty two? Twenty two Fahrenheit, wow. It's totally frozen. Blue it. Blue it. Actually I think it's it's good. Yeah. Because it's a frozen, it's like frozen in the <laughs> fridge, you know? It's keep it fresh. Take it. You can you can touch it, it's frozen like a stick. Oh wow. Oh, here's another one. Oh, another one. Another. Found, that's the joy of hunting mushrooms. You never know what you're gonna find in the next minute. Oh, it's honey. No, no, it's. it's oh, oh, it's a cord. Oh, it's a cord. Oh, wow. Oh my God! Right next to the blue it. Yeah. Oh my God! Compare them. Maybe it's a cord too. No, it's a blue it. Yeah, See? I think this is a, this is a blue. It. It's cord. Wow. A bluet? No, it's perfect look like a cord mushroom, which is poisonous. See these webs? These are um, partial veils, and they will leave a ring zone on the stem. But bluet has bare stem. Yeah. Also, see the gills. The cord takes on a dark brown color. But the blue is light tan. Sometimes the cord can be as lilac, so the safe way to differentiate the two is to do a spore print. The blue it has light tan spores, whereas the cord has brown spores. <laughs> It's too hard. I know, it's like frozen meat. Oh. Need a sharper knife. Yeah, I need to be careful and not to cut my fingers. The bluet has a similar texture as the button or portobello mushroom, and that makes it great for the cream of mushroom. Saute a cup of minced onion in oil. When onions get tender, toss in mushroom slices. I know that's a lot for a small pot, but they will shrink considerably. Saute the mushroom in its own juice and spice with herbs of your choice, rosemary, thyme, 
basil and parsley would be good. When the liquid almost evaporate, add 2 tablespoons of flour. Try to brown the flour without burning it. Then it's time to add some liquid. I use one part of white wine, one part of whole fat milk, plus some heavy cream. Simmer on low heat for around 20 minutes. Stir occasionally. Blend with a hand mixer and serve with French toast. How can you not like it? The ace mushroom is the brick cap. We know they are the brick caps, not the poisonous look-alike sulfur tuft because the cap is brick red and the gills have no greenish hue. But I'm not sure how similar the two species could look like because we are yet to find our first sulfur tuft. And as you can see, some brick caps are not so brick colored. I want to mention I like brick caps a lot because they have a very pleasant nutty flavor and it's good with a simple sauté in garlic butter. Talking about the color or rather the discoloration of the brick cap, we really thought these were brick caps at first. But wait, they have super slimy caps and cream-colored gills. So they are the anaki mushrooms, or the velvet foot. Just as these specimens are still too young to develop the brownish, hairy foot. Wow. Wow, it's really hard. Wow, it's really hard. Wow, it's really hard. Also remember, the anarchy doesn't have any ring or ring zone and it produces a white spore print. Although considered a choice edible, I don't think they are as good as honeys or brick caps, as they are bland and easy to get soggy. Finally, number 10. Believe it or not, we found more maitakes in November and December than in September and October. I think it's still fresh. It's good. Oh, it's already in November. I... Oh, here's a pretty small honey. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> Beautiful.
<笑>漂亮，这个，这个长得真漂亮，有点不忍心割它，但是。Mr. Slug， 这有点脏。你听我中文说。今天零下三度，对吧？嗯。非常冷，没想到在这儿还能发现这么大的一个 hand of the woods。<笑>这不知道什么。看了看。有点干，但是我觉得应该。哦，特别硬啊！但是我觉得应该回去用水 soak 一下，应该还是可以的。把它带回去。带回去。清理。冬天的 hand 肯有一个好处就是肯定不会有虫。哦。哦。哇哦！哎，对对对对对对。清理一下，真的还挺新鲜的。真的，就是这就是跟我们一样冻僵了。刀刀刀！啊！刀太小，看到大刀。对，刀太小，刀太小。They are completely bug free, which means they can sit in the fridge up to almost one month. My two cents. Fridged matakis taste much better than frozen ones and completely dried ones. 好重啊！很重，嗯，而且很干。嗯。哦，这这这是非常嫩，非常嫩，确实就能感觉到。嗯，因为它根部都是很嫩的。对，说明它可能还在生长。哇哦！ My takis are perfect for stews, and it's the easiest to do a stew using an instant pot or any high-pressure cooker. So this is an instant pot recipe: tomato beef maitake stew. Great. To prepare, soak 1.5 pounds of beef in water for two hours to remove the blood it contains. You can skip this step if you don't mind the blood. Cut across into each tomato and immerse the tomatoes in hot water. You see four medium-sized tomatoes here, but we actually used five, and six may be even better for your reference. A hot bath will make the tomato skin pretty easy to remove. This step is optional too. What is not optional is to break the maitake into small pieces and rinse carefully and thoroughly. The structure decides it can trap a lot of dirt, grasses, and branches in. In the instant pot, saute some ginger, garlic, and the whites of green onions. You can use the saute program, but I don't feel the temperature is high enough, so I go to stew directly, and the setting is high pressure, 45 minutes. The steam won't gather before you put the lid on. Add tomato chops and some leftover carrots got smuggled in as well. Saute until tomato juice comes out. Toss in a piece of bay leaf and one star anise. Then add the beef and mushrooms. Season with salt, soy sauce, plus a bit of white vinegar. Then put the lid on and leave the rest to the pressure cooker. Not a particularly good picture, but I guarantee you, it's very yummy. Simple, but yummy.
Alrighty, I would say our late fall slash winter foraging has been very fruitful so far. It has been raining for days and it is actually raining right now. The temperature is around 40ish. I guess there will probably be more mushrooms growing and I can't wait to see what we'll find. But before that, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. See you guys in 2019.